You rolling? Where's your camera? Or a picture? I don't know who I was talking to when I wrote this, but I just wrote, her breath smelled like tomato soup and white bread. <laughs> the small notebooks are really funny, whereas my journals are really depressing. <laughs> I think what a lot of people don't realize is just how much art and comedy go hand in hand with the whole process between organizing your material, whether it be with words or with paints and colors. It's trying to take all of these things and making them into one beautiful thing. It's expressing stories through color and emotion. And sometimes you don't even realize just how emotional it is until you're in it. And you're processing through it and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. Sometimes the only way to know if material is going to work is just to get on stage and do it. Like there's no guarantee. You just have to get up and put yourself out there and hope it connects. So we're here at the Comedy Palace, where I have a show tonight. Well, it's not my show. I'm an opener, AKA a nobody. I'm just kidding, I'm somebody. I'm channeling the nerves into excitement so the energy can go out on stage. <laughs> and it's the same with art or with painting. Like you don't know if something's gonna work or make sense or if those colors will go well together until you just take a risk and slap it on the canvas. It's messy. Life is so messy, but it's just taking all of the mess and making something with it, not giving up on it. And with comedy, you're taking some of the mess, you're taking some of the tough stories and making something lighthearted and connecting with people over it. <sighs> Guys are so easy. <laughs> Then he texted me an hour before the show and said, by the way, I'm bringing my girlfriend and some of my friends. Boo. Right? <laughs> I was like, why? Why are you going to text me? Well, you have a girlfriend. God, I am so sorry. <laughs> it's your first show on the road, JJ? First show on the road. I'm stoked. I'm a little nervous. Sometimes you just gotta dance. And you just gotta not care. And there's a lot of people around. It's so vulnerable being on stage. Like you're basically just putting yourself out there and being like, love me, you know? It's such a high, a show is such a high. I sometimes crash really low afterwards because it's so easy to just feed off of the affirmation of that moment. <laughs> like if I depend on that to make me feel good about myself, then I'm only ever gonna be as good as my last show. We need the audience for what we do, but at the same time, we can't need the audience as human beings because that's not what gives us our worth or our value. But Robin Williams is one of my greatest comedic influences, along with my mother. I think a lot of people can say that was a huge loss for them. He was basically my nanny, <laughs> Mrs. Delphire. Oh, hello! We made cool whip face masks all the time when we were little. Anyway, this is my way of like processing that whole loss. The comedy is, is both joyful and painful in art. There's bright colors and there's dark colors. It's just a mix. It's not one or the other. It's just life has both and it's learning how to live in the tension of there being both. It's this constant state of like, I don't know, while talking to people though and being like, I know. <laughs> You're going to have a hard time selling them. I know. It's going to cost it a lot of money. Yeah. It's also so necessary for any sort of creative career to have support, to have friends, to have community, to have connection. For those times when you get discouraged or uncertain, people say, go get it, go do it, look at you. But also too financially, you know, and this isn't just arts and crafts or story time. It's this is how I make my living and how I'm wired and I'd love to be financially supported in that way. I think that means you're poor. <laughs> Even a former football coach and a person who lived in a van yeah. could one day be paid to do comedy. Stuff that I want to sell. It's like the grocery store, you know, when you want you want like the most expensive in the middle, the cheapest is the top of the bottom because everyone looks right in the middle. This is our middle section of the grocery store. This is where we want the hot items. <laughs> oh, sweet. How much did you get? $70. What? <laughs> I got 42. Oh, is that twice? Let me see. 
the heck? Her show sold out. Mine didn't. And regardless of what you pursue, mainly I would just say, don't go it alone. You need people, and it's for people. I mean, that's why we're here. That's what this life is about, is people and connection. And it's easy to get lost in the tough stuff and only see ourselves. But it's other people that are going to pull us out of it, and it's other people that we're going to help once we are out of it. Have you ever met people and you wonder where they've been your whole life and why they haven't stayed there? <laughs> Tell us something in British. <laughs> Scones, tea, the queen. Say petrol. It's petrol. <laughs> Light rain. How do you say trunk? Boot. No, ah, I like it. What else do you say? Uh, pavement. As opposed to what? Sidewalk. Oh, okay. I hate sidewalks.